We are going live. We should be live. Should we? Yeah, we should. Okay. So, hello guys. This is Talking with Dashing Foxy. Now, let me just go ahead and do one thing. Hello there. Hello. Uh, so, let's just, let me just. Uh, share this on Facebook, Twitter, all the other stuff that I should be sharing it on. And hopefully you are too, sharing it on Facebook, Twitter, and other things. Other sorts of media outlets or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Okay, guys. Um, welcome to How to Make a fur meat. Now, I already know how to do this, so I'm going to go into steps and try to uh, keep everything in motion, uh, so it's going to be better for you and better for me. Um, now, you can take each step as they come and you can, you know, may maybe it'll help you in the future and get you on the right track to making a fur meat. And, you know, that's what I'm going to be talking about all day, is how to make a fur meat. So, uh, one thing I do want to say, I'm a little bit tired, so, raining all week, so I'm not going to be my 100% best ever in the world. Uh, but, if you are just tuning in this video, share it around with your friends, and maybe we can get some more people in here. Okay, so let's jump right into it. So I have these in sections. Uh, I, I really didn't do anything online because I, I'm, I got a couple videos that we'll, we'll check out later online and, and show you what fur meats are sometimes about. Because uh, to tell you the truth, it's so hard to do it online because everyone's from everywhere else. So even if I take an example from New Jersey... I kind of, you know, it's not really giving a portray of where you live. So I'm going to try to talk to you, talk to you guys and tell you the steps without really going on death online. So uh, you're going to be seeing my dashingly good looks basically all this episode until we get to the part where I have a couple examples of fur meats. And I'll show you what you have to put in them, what you got to do to them, and how you really get them into uh, character or into the line of light that where people can actually see in professionalism and stuff like that. I am doing great, third night, third, third night. I, again, suck at reading in this, so I apologize. I'm doing great uh, comments. Howdy, Fox and Friends. Hello. Good evening. Hello. I'm doing great. Okay, now, so what I want to talk about first is trying to find a good uh, location for it. So, uh, right now, I'm in the process of getting a meet together. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, number one, your, your very first question is what do you want to do for your meat? Now, there's plenty of different meat opportunities here. You can do the traditional bowling. Bowling is always a good thing to do because bowling is more social. So I'm going to be talking to everybody in bowling. Uh, you can do bumper cars. Uh, bumper cars are also a good source of opportunity. Uh, there's so many different ways here. So basically, let's just start with the, the most easiest one and we're going to go with bowling. Okay, so your very first task on creating a fur meat is location, location, location. It's not just for hotels, it's for anything you do when it comes to fur meats. So what you want to try to do is number one, try to find all the highly populated areas around you. 
unless if you live in Kansas or some other city that or other state that like doesn't have a lot of people in it, which is going to be hard, but sometimes you got to drive to these meets and you got to set them up so you can help yourself uh, get more people. So step one, oh, I, I wish I could really have titles going across, but I don't have that fancy editorial skills yet. I, I'm learning it. Don't worry. We'll get there. But step one is you're going to have to figure out your location. So if you're doing a bowling meet, number one, you're going to have to check out the prices. Okay. Prices are really key for any sort of thing that you're going to be doing. Uh, first, you're going to want to do prices and then you're going to want to be doing the location and then you're going to be wanting to know how much you charge for your firm meet. So let me give you an example right now of my firm meet and I'll show you the prices and I'll show you all the other stuff that we'll do. Okay, so I'm basically going to go to here and I'm going to go to here. So your very first step is I first found a place to eat, which I always like to start my meets out with a place to eat because it gives the chance for them to relax, socialize before the bowling meet starts. So what I did was, I, I, you know, I live in New Jersey, which I know, sorry for me, but uh, what I did was I did for dinners. So when I went for dinners, I went like eight to six. It's, uh, I usually try to do my meets like six to 10 or six to, th this one in case is 10.30. Uh, the only reason why you want to do them later is because there might be people out there who have to work in the morning. You always got to be consideration for the people. And we're, we're going to get to that. We're, we're, this is only step one of trying to find a location. So my location is going to be Laurel Lanes and stuff like that. And basically what you're doing here is you're creating a meet that everybody agrees to. Everybody's not going to be too disappointed in the fact that they're going to go bowling. Uh, also, you're going to want to find, again, that location. And that was the perfect location for me with Laurel Lane. So let me just switch it back to my face here because my face is beautiful, isn't it? Okay, I got to get over myself. But here, here's why. Whenever you're creating your very first meet, you're not always going to be Mr. Popular. You're not going to get that 300 to 400 people in that set meet. So don't get discouraged. Do not to feel like your world's going to be falling apart because you can't get as much people as the next guy. So that's why you're going to be looking at locations. Uh, that's why the Delaware Fur Bowl is so successful in its run because the Delaware Fur Bowl is so close to New Jersey and it's so close to Maryland that people are really starting to go, hey, it's not that far a drive for me, and, uh, you know, it, it's great. That's where the location comes in. So you're doing your very first firm meet, and you found a location that, that's just perfect. You know, you, you got all that set. Um, now, s step one was location. Uh, step two is basically putting the wheels into motion. So what you're going to have to do, number one, is you're gonna to have to visit this location, obviously. Uh, and you're gonna to have to tell them about your fur, uh, your fur suits, okay, like mine. Okay, so what I did was I called them up and I told them, okay, I'm having this furry meet. And they're like, what the heck is a furry meet? I mean, my God, you got what? Costumes, animals, what? Okay, so. Don't be alarmed. So what I did was I went to the bowling alley, explained my situation, and got them too. So step number two is is basically making sure that the place is fursuit compatible. Okay, so, and what I mean by this is, is that they're not going to freak out if you have your fursuit on. Uh, whenever I do my meets and I'm just starting out and I'm, I'm doing it well, is that I, I check on the location first to make sure everything's good. 
And then I take a look at the bowling alley itself and I ask them a million questions. Questions for furry meats are probably the best thing that's like overlooked in every sort of way. Because not only do you want people to know that you're a furry and, you know, know that your costumes are allowed in the bowling alley, your everything's allowed in there. Uh, it's also a good thing, too, because it gets you to scope the area if you go to the location. Uh which is probably another overwhelming thing for people. They go, well, I got to go to the location now and it's going to be so tough. Fur meats are not that tough. I'm going to tell you that right now. They're not that tough to set up. Really, the, the, the two main things here is location and what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so for my meat, what I did here, um, I don't want to brag about my meat. I'll show other meats here too. So don't, don't think I'm just going to my meat and going, oh my gosh, this guy's just showing his meat. Okay, so uh, my meat is basically, this is what you have to have. And, and this is why I, I always try to have these in my Fermi's. Okay, you need a place. Sorry, I can't really see anything. Okay, you need a place that has all the different requirements that it needs. Like, let's say if you're a, you are you have fursuits and they're, they're allowing fursuits and all this other stuff. So what you're going to need is one of these. And it's going to be a changing room with private a privacy to allow you to change and hold your belongings. Now, why is this important is number one. Okay, we're furries. So just even even if you take a look at me. Okay, am I going to want this out in public? Am I going to, am I going to want all my personal belongings? My first suit that costed me, like I told you before, it cost about 3000 sometimes for these suits. What I would like to get that stolen, no. So I, I try to always consider to have a party room, a meeting room, and other things like that. So it's about the location. It's about if first suits are allowed. And it's about if you can get a party room. Now, sometimes, yes, the party rooms are pretty dang expensive. Because the, the one room I wanted to go for in that place, it was like $1,000 for an hour. And I was like, <gasps> <sighs> no, no, you're, you're not going to want that excessive. But what I did was I worked with them and they gave me a party room. And that's the good thing about bowling alleys. And that's why I think a lot of people choose bowling alleys as a good first time meet. Because you can get the option of either upgrading and moving to a huge place. Or you can, you know, maybe just have a chill, relaxed meet. Now, if you don't have a party room available in your bowling alley, if you're going to go to that bowling alley, try to make sure that there's curtains or something that will really, you know, give fursuiters and other, thing, other places to put their belongings so they're not going to hurt. Now, Delaware gets away with this because they don't really have the, uh, basically the room for it. So what they do is they take curtains and they put it up all around the uh, top area. And then they basically consider that the headless lounge slash putting your private stuff too. So, um, basically... If, if you follow those and you try to get some place that has the, the right requirements for it, oh, you'll be fine. And again, questions. Always ask questions when you're doing fur meets. Uh, so I have a question here. Let me just read it. Uh, do you get nervous at fur meets or cons? Well, I don't really get nervous at them. I've had a million types of things. Uh, for fur meets, uh, actually... One thing I do get nervous about is uh, is kind of the failure to fail. I'm a very, like, I get very nervous about different things. Like, like let's say if a handicapped person shows up and I have no handicap lane, I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna really that panic that much. I'm more going to be scared because I don't know what to do. But I'll figure it out. It takes a while, and that's that's another good point. Uh, and we're going to get to that. But 
Uh, one other point I want to make too, if this is your very first time ever making a firming, try to get a friend involved. Uh, and why I say that is because my very first firming went like kind of not really disastrous, but I would say not really according to plan because of the simple fact that I didn't have anybody with me and I kind of got lost in the trying to keep the schedule going, moving slowly. And again, you're furries. You're not going to be completely on time on schedules. So that's why you should have another friend who helps you out with the situation. Uh, for, for me, I try to have friends advertise it I'm not the greatest at advertising. I've only had four people watching this. And you could tell my advertising skills are not really the up the par, as you say. So what I always try to do is I always try to have somebody either advertising it or if I have an on-site type of thing, uh, I have somebody, you know, uh, if I'm collecting money that time because of the expense of the bowling alley, I always have some other person there trying to, you know, at least help me out through it to, you know, be like, okay, that guy paid, that guy paid, that guy paid. Okay, we're all good. So, uh, very first time for meets, I definitely recommend you having a friend there to help you either manage the money or uh, manage the time so he can help you out. It's good to also have two other people too because two heads are better than one. Uh, that old saying, in my opinion, is probably the best saying you could go with a firming. So, let's say, yeah, you figured it out. You you asked all the questions to the right people. The manager said it's a okay to get firmings. Uh, you got the party room. So, what's your next step? Well, your next step, in my opinion, is taking pictures of the place, because you want these people to know what what they're getting into. Uh, and what I mean by getting into, I mean by getting, like, actually going there and actually seeing what you see. Okay, so, now, the only reason why you do this is, number one, you want them, you want them to be like, okay, this guy's confidently got a room. Okay, so that's number one. You, go, you confidently got the room, you, they're seeing it, and they're going, yes, I want to go. Uh, number two of that too is you want to let them know if it's on like a major highway, it's easier, it's easy to see from the side of the road so they can see it perfectly and stuff like that. Uh, now, you took the pictures, you're going online now. Now, this is the tough one for me. Uh, the, the third part of this whole entire thing after getting the room and getting all this other stuff. Uh, and make sure to get a receipt. Let me show you my receipt. I always get a receipt. Uh, and I have the receipt for the lanes. Um, I want to see if... Let me just change the camera here and make sure I'm seeing it. I have the receipt for the lanes. Because if you don't have the receipt for the lanes and you show up and go, Oh no, I don't have the lanes. Uh, I, I realize this from my... Almost my very first attempt. I was trying to do it in Altoona when I lived in Altoona. And uh, I almost completely screwed up because I had the dates completely misread. And because I didn't have a receipt. Uh, so what what I would do if I were if I were you, uh, your very first time, you're going to want that receipt. And you're going to want to also make sure. Because sometimes, you know, if you get too much lanes... Uh, another another question you should probably ask them is, can I take down the lanes? Like with this bowling alley, I made sure that, let's say if only eight people show up and I don't have enough expense to pay for all the meat, make sure that they can actually be like, okay, well, we'll take off some lanes. We'll get some, we'll get some of that money out of there and we'll get some uh, basically just yeah, that's basically it. Because if you end up having a $600 bill to this and only eight people come, you probably aren't going to get everyone to pay you about 50 bucks to stay. Nobody in their right mind would. I wouldn't. I mean, 
Well, and behold, I love furry meats, but for $50, that's a little pricey. So the, the more of the questions you ask, the better chances of actually your fur meat actually succeeding and getting better at this. Uh, and again, like I'm going to tell you out through all the video, if this is your very first fur meat, do not get discouraged. If you only have five people who showed up, that's five more than you thought would have showed up. So all throughout the video, I'm going to tell you this because I've had meats that only like three people showed up and it's like, well, that's kind of, and eh, that it kind of like hurts your feelings. Cause it's like, did I do something wrong? But don't get discouraged. You're going to keep going and we're going to keep talking about this. And, uh, so we basically got up the meat. We, we set up everything. Uh, we, we've got everything to go for the meat plan and schedule. Uh, dinners, if you do want to do a dinner before it, I would definitely recommend having it. A, I always try to do a three-mile basis because if it's way too far out, people are going to get confused and they're not going to be able to really try to find a bull alley. They have, everybody has GPS now. Everybody, everybody has a phone. Uh, speaking of phones, I will be taking phone calls later, but everybody has one of these. So don't be discouraged, but still, you don't want to have it 20 miles out to your bull because people are going to go like, well, I'm not going to drive 20 miles to it. And, and we'll get to the food part a little bit later. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's just do it right now. Screw it. Uh, but first, I have a question asking. Uh, how about uh, searching people to come and they can make it, yet they do not... Wait, they do, and, and yet what do you do if an unknown person shows up without, that wasn't invited, as if he was invited, I mean, in, invi Ugh. I can't read right now, hold on, let's just take this pair of sentence by sentence, okay, how about a select person, I mean, people, I think it's supposed to be select pe selecting people to come and go. Okay, so you're basically saying an invite only. Well, if it's an invite only, that's basically a party. Uh, but uh, if somebody unknown person shows up that wasn't invited, as if it was, as if it was only an invite only. Well, I, I have no clue about that, but uh, I would recommend if the person knows them and they're like, oh, this guy's cool, then. Yeah, just let him let him be. It's not gonna really hurt anything. Uh, and these are furries too. Even a planned out invite type of thing that where people have to sign up, there'll be furries all the time showing up without even signing up on the the website. So, tell you the truth, as long as he's cool, let him be. Just just let him be. Okay. So let's talk about the dinner for a little bit. Uh, number one. Don't let anyone wear their first suit during a dinner because this is a dinner establishment, okay? And I'm not saying that we're like, we're not like at the equal level of a dinner establishment. You don't want any fursuits ruined. You're not going to be the guy who goes, well, I let him in and he spilt like Coke all over me. So my beautiful fursuit. Well, don't, don't do that. Okay, so usually what I always do is when it comes to dinner, you just want them to wear a tail or some other thing. Uh, and I think my did my thing just turn off. Sorry, guys. I just want to make sure everything's okay with that. Because I'm taking phone. Oh, shoot. No, okay. No, it was good. Welcome. Stu stupid. To connected to Bluetooth stupid device. me. I'm getting nervous. Technical difficulties. Just trying to figure out everything. Okay. As we continue on, uh, we also have to realize that when you do this, right, you're making a fur meet and you're make you're getting people who are furries there. Uh, what you're going to want to do is have a place that everybody can afford. Oh, hello there. But you need a place that everybody can afford. And I don't know why my damn thing's beeping. 
Makes absolutely no sense to me. Let's put it over here for right now. Well, I think battery just died. It's okay. We'll get to it. But basically this. Okay, so if you're getting a fur for anything, you're going to want to eat cheaply. Uh, most furries don't have necessarily a lot of money. I don't have a lot of money. So if I'm going to an upscale restaurant that has lobster in it, nine chances out of ten, I'm not going to that damn restaurant. I'm just going to go to the fur bowl, enjoy myself and everything like that. So don't go to an upscale place. Like it could be what I always try to do. I always try to think of like, since it's diners around here, I always try to think of that. Uh, Perkins is a good place to go. Uh, maybe even Burger King. I, I mean, it's not that expensive and it's not that bad and you can all jam up into a little corner and at least you can eat Burger King. Uh, but when you're having these dinners, don't go exquisite. You don't want to go exquisite. You don't want to be paying $350 for a meal. So what I always try to do is like Denny's or some other place that's pretty cheap, light on the wallet, because these guys aren't always necessarily going to be the richest people in the world. Uh, so that's my tip if you have dinner. And if you have dinner, leave for two hours. Uh, two hours is a good, like, standard for me. And the only reason why I say two hours is a good standard is because it gives everybody a chance to eat. It gives everybody a chance to just relax before the meat. And that's what you want. You want people to be relaxed. You don't want to be going in there and all angry about how their meal was more expensive than their first suit or, or how everything was. So... Try to find a good, affordable place that's not going to cost you that much. Uh, number two is the space for, if they're having a restaurant, and let's say if you have, like, a small little Italian restaurant, is just small, don't have it in the small places, because if your meat ends up turning out to have 20 people in it, and you're all crammed like this, going, hey guys, this, this is a great place, you know, don't do that. So what you're going to want is you're going to want a restaurant like Denny's or some other place. That, and if you do, let them know beforehand too. Call up them and tell them uh, party for eight or party for this. Unless if you're going to Burger King or Subway or some other place like that where it really doesn't matter. You just show up and eat. Uh, then you'll be, you'll be fine. Uh, and don't go to like some hipster place too because then... It's going to be really packed and then you're not going to be able to get a reservation or anything. So keep it simple, easy, and affordable. That's what you're going to do for d dinner. It's simple, easy, and affordable. So you can go bowling and you're not going to be completely starving and paying the ridiculous amount of money for bowling anything. Okay, so we basically covered the dinner. Uh, and the dinner is basically done and you went to your bowling alley and everything like that so now we're going to be talking about something i suck at i suck at advertising and it's not i don't know if it's me or maybe it's it's like god just saying how you can't you can't uh, advertise people don't like you i don't know i don't know what's wrong with me but if you're advertising right uh first you're going to want to do is advertise in local sites or local chats or anything like that okay and what i mean by this is if you live in new jersey and you're advertising in california you're doing something wrong so like my meat okay so let me let me uh pull up i i have it somewhere in here let me just pull up my meat here uh and just as an example, again, I'm not trying to boat myself and I'm not trying to like go, ha ha, my meat's awesome. I'm not trying to do that at all. So don't, don't think I'm doing that. Okay. So basically this. Okay. So I'm in New Jersey. Okay. So let's, let's just go to Google maps and I'll show you where I'll show you everything that where this meat's happening. I think, I think I have it in there. Laurel lanes. Okay. And uh, let's go to the map here. Okay, so Laurel Lanes 
is in basically southern New Jersey. Okay, so once it loads here and actually, you know, starts to work for me because it just doesn't like me right now. Okay, but right now, okay, I'm basically right here. This is where my meat's happening. It's right here. So I'm going to be trying to advertise for the Philadelphia market. Okay, now I know it sounds really stupid that I just said market for furries, but there is a lot of substantial people in Philadelphia. So I'm going to be trying to go for that target. I'm going to try to go for Philadelphia. I'm going to try to go maybe a little bit more south into a little bit Delaware because Delaware is right here, Wilmington, and that's right up there. So all they have to do is take 295. And I'm going to be trying to go maybe far east as Edison or Bridgewater, you know, in that terms. Now, am I expecting people from New York to come to this meet? No. I'm not even remotely thinking of New York. Because New York, that's about a two and a half hour drive. And my God, if you're going two and a half hours like I did before to a fur meet, then you either, A, must not really have that much going on in your life or B you don't know a lot of furries around in your area which I didn't when I lived in Altoona there was really no furries and I had to travel for my meets so basically let's just let's just stick to here so I'm going to be trying to market the Philadelphia maybe a little bit further in Reading you know Reading's not too far away or Lancaster okay so all uh, right the only reason why I'm not trying to go farther than that, because that's far out of their reach. They're going to have to be thinking about going because it's so far away. Uh, so basically, I'm going to be just looking in the Philadelphia region and stuff like that. So let's just say I found a Philadelphia region group uh, and Telegram is a great, great source. I'll show you Telegram in a little bit. Okay, but... I'm just showing you places that you probably want to market to. Okay, so Philadelphia is a big region. So I'm going to be marketing from there. Okay, and then then I'm going to be going down to maybe far as Wilmington, Delaware, which that's only another hour and a half hour drive. So that's not going to be that too far away. So I'm going to first start at Philadelphia and hopefully the word of mouth gets around Philadelphia that my meet's going on. So, also, uh, speaking of that, too, you want to give people a notice and, and tell them that they are, you know, give them a two-week notice. I always call it the two-week notice because this will give them the chance to get off their jobs, to get off their different things. So, give them a two-week notice. Mine happened to be a month in advance. So, that gives ample enough time for people to go, well... I have to really check my schedule. I can ask for it off and stuff like that. So you're going to want a two-week notice in any sort of fashion, two weeks or no weeks at all. Because if you do it a week before, nobody's going to show up because they're going to go, oh, well, that's not too, that, that, that's too little. Okay, so basically I'm going to do that. So let's go back to my pretty face and, uh, really explain a little bit more advertising strategies, which again, I'm not the greatest at advertising. So if, if I kind of like mislead you, it's not my fault. I'm just trying to get this. So let's see if we have any comments in here that I can ask about. Uh, let's see. It's subway, a good place. Subway is a good place. You can definitely go to subway. Uh, subway is great. Uh, it's affordable, it's cheap, and also a lot of times you don't need a reservation in there. So Subway is a good place to do. If anyone is new here, like and subscribe. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, people should do that. Um, yeah, if, if you are new and, and you would like to subscribe to my channel, and uh, maybe if this isn't like the best topic that you ever wanted to hear about, then yeah. Uh, I have other topics too. I will be talking about other things next week. Uh, this one is basically just because I want to let people know on how to actually do a fur meet, but Subway is a good place and everything like that. Okay. So you literally just got in, got into this and you're getting ready to advertise. 
Right now, I'm going to open up my Telegram and show you some uh, things that where you can do it. And, and what you're going to also have to realize, too, that is, uh, if I can only speak right now, that if you're doing a firm meet, again, not everyone's going to show. So, and the only reason why I say this is because, hold on, I got a phone call. Uh, nope, don't want that right now. But basically what you're going to want to do here is, is uh, advertise it to the right people. So let me, I have some different advertisements that I will put it in and everything like that. Let me go to my Telegram right now and uh, show you what I'm talking about. So, uh, again, can't see in this, so don't mind me. I'm just trying to get by and live my life to the fullest. Okay. So, now you're probably wondering, what's Telegram? Well, Telegram can be used on your phone. It can be used on different sorts of media. And like this, this is basically my Telegram. Uh, I have some bad stuff in here, so don't don't look at that. But let's take Philadelphia right here, right? So what I'm going to be doing here is, number one, this is Philadelphia chat. So I'm going to be posting it to this one right here. For 107 members, there's a bound to at least be three or four that are going to want to go to my meet. And how you get that meat across, in my opinion, the best website for it, uh, Skippy actually created it. It's actually this website right here. Let me just exit out of mine here. It's this meat, right? It, it's for SVP. This is a great website. It gives you all the sorts of things that you need. You need people to sign up for your meat so you know who's coming. Because if you do not know who's coming... This could become a problem if you do not like a person and let's say they, you know, they create drama and you know, you've had problems with them before you can say, Hey, I don't want you to come to my meet. Oh, sorry. I don't want you to come to my meet. Uh, we've had problems in the past, so please stay away. So, that's why you're going to want this. And I know it sounds kind of mean, but there will be the people who create drama. It, it, it's bound to happen. This fandom is not perfect. You're not going to find everybody who's loving and caring as everybody you think. Because there will be people out there who will be just absolutely rude and you do not want at your meat. And so basically this gives you the good option of actually seeing uh, you know, just seeing who signed up. So let me just go to my meet. We'll just say, oh, that's not it. Yeah, no. Wait, which one's mine? Yeah, no, it's this one. Duh. Okay. So this one's my meet. I have 11 people who signed up so far. So I'm going to be looking through this list and I'm going to be like going, okay, that guy's good. That guy's good. Everyone seems really good on here so far. Uh, and it lets you provide a link and it'll show you what they do or if they have an account or anything like that. So this is a great website. It's Sir SVP. I have it in the descriptions below. You can definitely check it out. Create your own meet. You can sign up. It's free. So you don't have to worry about anything. And I'm not just saying that because I'm an advertiser for them. I'm saying that because I've used this website at least a million times and every time it works out great. Okay. So we literally just set up the meet. So what you're going to want to do is do what I always do. And I know it's not really spamming. It's kind of like just letting people know that it is in there. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be just pasting this and I'll be posting it. That's basically it. That's, that's basically what you want to do and other things I've already posted in here and I'm not going to be a spammer. I'll do it another week. And what my general thumb is, is if you have like a bunch of chats that you can do is that you're going to want to, you're going to want to do that. And at least once a week, don't spam them the hell and go like every three hours, I'm going to do this. Don't do that. Nobody likes that type of person and they're going to kick you from the group and you don't want that. 
So, as you can tell, I got Furry Delphia to uh, post that there. I'll post it on uh, Fur State, which is the Delaware Fur Bowl, which congratulations to them. They're over 100 now. Congratulations to them. Um, and I'm going to post it in South Jersey. I found this, and I was like, what a perfect place to put it. She even pinned it for me, and it's right there. Great in size and everything like that. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to be looking on Telegram. And then you're going to want to go to the old-fashioned websites. Like, I, I, I usually do it, again, once a week on Twitter. Uh, now, what you're going to want to do on Twitter, too, uh, if you can, uh, like this is my, obviously my page, I got it whatever, is you're going to want to look for South uh, New Jersey, like what I do. Um, and if there is no furry thing there too, uh, I don't even know if they have one. I just, I, I know that there's New Jersey first. So let me just type in New Jersey first. Can't see in this thing. So New Jersey first, right? So I'm going to just click on that. I think they have, uh, they have one. No. Yeah, they do right here. So what you're going to want to do with this is you're going to want to post it on like a web on a social media like this, because this is all the people in the area. All the people is already lined up for you. You don't have to worry. You don't have to go. Well, I don't know if he lives in Jersey and I don't know if he does. Well, Obviously, everybody lives in Jersey in this group. So you're going to want to look for something like Twitter like this when you're advertising. And again, my advertising skills are not the 100% beauty. And I'm not telling you that you're going to get 852 billion people who happen to fall upon your thing and go, wow, I really want to be at his firm. So, uh... The only reason why I'm saying this is because I've learned from experience. I have done uh, fur meets in the past, and I'm not going to say they turned out super, super fantastic. And and that's, that's basically it. Sorry, I had to scratch my nose, and it was really getting annoying. And I didn't want to, like, start talking and whatever. But all I'm saying is, is that's what you're going to want to do. And this is a perfect, perfect example of a good place to go. It has all the jersey furs in it, and it's it's going to be real simple and everything like that. So let me just uh, do something real quick. I got to plug in my uh, Bluetooth so I can take phone calls later because I really want to take phone calls later. So give me like this bear on with me for like two seconds if I can get the dang thing in come on but yeah if, if you have any questions so far about what what you think would be a good fur meat place just let me know in the com I mean in the uh, chat now or comments below and I will definitely answer you so you just plug that in okay so here we go let me go back to my shiningly good face oh sorry I had to plug in my thing. Oh, wait. No, hold on. Let me just switch that. Oop. Camera not working. Camera malfunction. Okay. Switch that back. Okay. So, you see my shining good face now. Obviously. Because uh, you, you are watching it live. Okay. So, basically, that's what you're going to want to do. Is you're definitely going to want to figure out that place that's special to you. And then you're going to want to advertise it like so. So I'm going to advertise it on all the Jersey sites that I possibly can. Because if I do not advertise it on the Jersey sites, then things are going to really be screwed up and everything is, it's, it's not going to turn out well. So let me see if we have any comments now to ask about or whatever. Okay. So, uh, nice trophy room. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I reported... Uh, well, let's see. What is it? Uh, I have give me. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Okay. So basically this 
is uh, number one, trolling is very funny. So ha 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 to you. And number two is this. Is whenever you're doing a firm meet or in any sort of fashion here is it it really takes a lot of effort to do but it doesn't necessarily take a lot of effort so it's it's hard to explain but we're going to keep going with this so you're advertising this you're going again you want to have a bunch of different uh you're going to want to have a bunch of different friends helping you out and the only reason why i'm saying this is because if you don't have a lot of good friends helping you out, you're going to be having a lot of difficulty when it comes to any sort of basically advertising. Because advertising really, really helps. Uh, another thing I, I would like to say too, when you're advertising, again, don't spam. Do not spam the damn thing. Don't be going, click, 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 spam, 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 spam. No, don't do that. Because if you spam it, you're going to create less people interested. Uh, because they're going to go, wow, this guy is really desperate. Just 100% desperate on the level of that. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take it moderately. Anything is good in a moderation. If you eat fish every day, you could die from mercury poison if you, so that's why you only eat it like once a week, twice a week. So moderation is key when it's advertising. Uh, because I could be advertising every day on my show about how great it is and everything, but I don't because I like to keep it in moderation. So, so you're advertising it, you're getting the word about, and you're starting to really, uh, take charge and, and you're, you're about, Three, four weeks away. What else do you want to do? Hold on. <coughs> what you're going to want to do is this. Go to other meets. If, if you have a chance to go into another meet that's around the area, talk about your meet. Now, don't talk about it excessively. Like, go up to somebody and just start whamming on how awful this meet is, how your meat's the best thing in, since bread. But... What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take it in moderation for that. But that, again, that's, that's what I just said, but it's, it's really, it's really key because there's a lot of people out there who do meats and that's all they talk about is their meat. So what I want to do here is, uh, is talk about if you go to another meat, you're not going to, you're not going to get cards made. I mean, obviously not. So you're going to want to gradually go into the conversation of just going, okay, well, this meat's great, but did you know I'm having this one? Did you know is probably one of the best things that you can say because did you know really gets their attention. It really makes them look. So did you know I'm having a meat? Oh yeah. Wow. Well, are you having a meat? Where are you having it at? What, what time is it? Or is, is it allowed dogs? No. Okay. So there may not be asking all these questions, but still, to promote your meat, you can assist with the other meat. So, uh, that's basically uh, what I would say to that. And another another thing that I would say to any form of meeting uh, or furries or anything like that is that you are going to get, again, there's a guy in the comments creating trouble in my thing, but it doesn't matter. Because what, what you have to do is you have to ignore the drama. Uh, if you ignore the drama uh, for your meat, because that's a good point. Let's just say you get to your meat and there's a guy creating drama. Well, I got some good news. You can automatically call the police on them. Yeah. If, if they are threatening you or, you know, keep harassing you and anything like that, you can call the police on them. Congratulations. You can. So don't let haters be hated. L love them. So that person out there who's keeps threading my comments saying that, I love you. I really do. I have no problem with you. You got the first amendment on your side. So if you keep doing it, it's whatever.
So actually go ahead. It might make me more popular in the end. Okay, so let's keep going. And let's talk a little bit more about you, you got the furry meat, you're advertising it, you're really well, and you're doing it. Now, the one thing I'm going to tell you right now, uh, and I, I've tried this and it does not work, is don't, don't oversell it, okay? This is your very first meat. So you're not going to be going in there getting 800 people Ever. You're not going to be getting 800 people in your very first meet. So like I said before, do not get discouraged. It's your very first meet. That's all it's to it. It's your very first meet. Don't get discouraged. Keep going. You got three people. Three people is better than zero people, right guys? So uh, if you don't get discouraged and you keep going at it, you're going to eventually keep getting more and more interest. And you're going to get word of mouth. And that's the one thing, another thing about advertisement. It's all about word of mouth. If you have a bunch of people, you know, uh, going to your meet, or not even a bunch, but three people, one of those three people is going to go, hey, I went to this meet in Jersey, and it was great. And I'd be like, yeah, that's freaking awesome. And then you're having already a conversation with the person, so you're already getting word of mouth around and that's the key thing to it advertising is basically all word of mouth if you see a commercial you're going to tell that person around the corner who's going well there's I, I need a car well i just heard about this car dealer that's selling them for real cheap and they're giving way and blah 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 so word of mouth is very popular when it comes to the advertising so Eventually, if you have enough people who eventually go to it, you'll eventually have people talking about it. And that's fine. And that's what you want. You want people to be talking about your meats. And it will eventually get to that point where you do get, you know, good and you eventually have 20 or 30 people. So now you're down to two weeks to go. Number one Bef on two weeks, I always call the bowling alley or call the place that I'm having it and make sure everything's still A-OK. -okay. And the only reason why you want to call them, because something might have happened in that, uh, in that span. So what you're going to want to do is call the bowling alley uh, after two weeks. So that's basically what I would say to do. Call the dinner place to make sure they got their reservation and make sure everything's good on that front. So you're basically doing it and you're basically getting through it. And now since you've got all of it, you got all of it down now, you've got everything going right for you. The, the meat's all set up. You're doing it. The day arrives. After two weeks, the day arrives, and now you can basically do anything you want. Well, actually, not don't do anything you want because you can't be running out in the middle of the street naked or anything like that. So, now, you're basically doing this. You're basically, you want to get to the place about 30 minutes earlier. And the only reason why I say 30 minutes earlier it's because you want to make sure everything's set for everyone to come. Okay. And there will be people who come early. Surprisingly, uh, I went, I had a meet for a whole entire time and I basically got four people who signed up and everything come 30 or 40 minutes early. So if you show up early, a lot of times it's going to be beneficial for you because people will go, well, the meet must be happening here because the guy's already here and he's already here and everything's already here. So that's the one thing I do want to say. So you show up 30 minutes early, you get the table, you're, you're all set to go. You've, you've got all the daisies, you've got all the roses. Don't, don't do that. I'm just being sarcastic. But the whole entire thing is you've got everything set to go. Now, everybody shows up that is on the list. 
and you realize there's four or five people who are in on the list and you're going, whoa, what's going on here? I've got, I've got a total of 11, but now I got 15. <coughs> Stupid allergies. Don't worry. Don't panic. This is what furries do. They, in my opinion, furries are one of those people that they don't always sign up. They don't always do it. They, they remotely like stay away from signing up. So it's all unexpected. So basically what we're going to need to do is you found these people who didn't were or not on the list, but yet they are there and everything. Don't panic. You're all good. And that's why you always reserve more on your tables too. If you're going to reserve more on your tables, that's going to be a lot better than showing up thinking, Oh, it's only going to be 15 and I only reserved 15 spots, but now there's 18 to 19 spots. So don't, don't worry about it. You're going to keep going and everything's going to be great. So you got 20 people to fill on 15 show up. So now you're already good. You're already in the spotlight. Okay. So you're eating dinner. And you're about 30 minutes away from the bowling meet itself. So what you're going to want to do is my trick is you leave 30 minutes before all of it happens. And the only reason why I say 30 minutes is because it's one of those things that if you show up to the bowling alley, you can get everything set up. Like me, I have drinks. I have unlimited drinks at my, my bowl. So what I'm doing is I, I'm going there and I'm going to get everything ready, get all the drinks ready, the sodas, the, the pop and all these other wonderful things. If you don't say soda, but so you got everything calculated. You're getting everything, got the lane set. That's really key. And let's say you forget one thing. Don't panic. Uh, the worst thing you can do when you're hosting a firm meet is panicking. Uh, and, and this, it will tend to happen. There will be little bumps on the road here and there. And you'll, you'll get a panic moment that where you're going, my God, what am I doing? My life is over. This sucks. Everyone hates me. Oh, well, don't do that. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to, number one, you're going to want to take a deep breath and you're going to want to have to, it's, it's hard to explain, but you're going to want to just, Bear with it and keep going. Uh, unless if you have a money issue, then you got yourself a problem. No, I'm kidding. No, don't worry. Even if you have a money issue, there'll be some other furry that will at least help you out or at least try to help you out uh, as long as you know him well. And that's where the second guy comes in. With the second guy, he can help you out. He is part of this now too. So you've got two guys keeping up with this and you got two guys who are literally getting everything uh, basically together and everything like that. So that's why you bring in two guys. So that's, and, and I'll keep saying it, two people when you first start out is the best kind of people. Because if you end up screwing up, you end up messing up, you got somebody to back you up and he'll help you out. He'll get you through it. If they're money issues then you tell, you know, a lot of times too, if you do have any sort of problem, that second guy will definitely, you know, go, D don't panic. He's the guy who basically slaps you in the face and goes, oh, you're good now. So you're at your bowling alley and everything like that and everything's going great. So uh, now we're going to, we're going to take a look at some of the comments. I know this one guy keeps commenting me. Which, good for him. He must not have a life, but that's fine. I don't really get mad. I don't really get mad at people like that. Okay, so let's see if we have, if we have, uh, let's see if we have any real comments here. Uh, what if you do not have anybody in your area like me? How do you uh, set up a meet? Well, see, I have that problem too. I lived in a little town called Altoona. Okay, Altoona is basically a small piece of nothing. There is literally nothing there at all. So what I did was I looked at Altoona 
And I looked at the bigger cities neighboring it. Like, I looked at Pittsburgh, uh, which is about an hour and a half away, so people can come from Pittsburgh. Uh, I looked at uh, places like State College, which is only an hour away from there. And I looked at the surrounding cities, and I basically took that into consideration. So what I did was, when I advertised for it, and everything like that, I advertised for... I did like a triangle because that's basically the pattern that it made was a triangle, which in my opinion was kind of funny. But so I looked at State College, I looked at uh, Pittsburgh, and I looked at Harrisburg. Harrisburg was also a good one because it was only about an hour or two hours away. So uh, the expansion of it is about two hours. That's my expansion for Altoona. So. I even looked at Cumberland, but Cumberland is a small little town in Maryland that nobody knows. So it's whatever. So I basically looked at all these cities and I said, okay, I'm going to first post it in Pittsburgh. I got some hits on Pittsburgh. Then I posted it on Harrisburg. I got a little bit of hits on Harrisburg. State College, I got two hits. So that's where you do it. That's why whenever you are around in a meet like that, you will definitely have a better chance if you can find that area that's like in the middle between everything. So uh, basically that's what I would do. And it would, that's, that's basically my tip for you. Uh, people are difficult calling in or another, uh, blah, 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 soda pop. Um, it just depends on where you live. I don't really get angry on that. Uh, you can either call it soda or pop. Uh, it's the South. Okay, well, we're getting into a whole discussion about soda pop. I didn't really see that. Um, do to do, do to do, do. Just seeing if there's anybody who really. Uh, but uh, three games is. Uh, town. Let's see. Okay, so out of the five people, there are three people in this town ha well it's true and you know again that's why you take a look at neighboring places you always take a look at neighboring places so and that's the key part is neighboring places so if if you live in wisconsin your main goal is to try to find a place that really is close to milwaukee and you're not going to get that you know you're going to be able to travel distance you know, if you have to travel a little bit, fine. If it's only 30 minutes away, I mean, that's not going to really kill you, is it? I mean, 30 minutes isn't too bad. So even if you live in a no-name town, you can still create a meet. And how you can do it, again, is basically by creating the cities around it. That's how you do it. You, you make the cities around it go. Make it charge your meet. So... Uh, let's see the best person, the worst person at meets. Uh, the best places and the worst places for meets. Well, the worst place would be uh, having a miniature golf meet in 90 degree weather. Not a good idea. I, I've had that happen to me almost once. Thank God it didn't turn out to be 90, but that's a pretty hot place to be. So probably that'd be the worst place to have a meet. Number two, the best place is a bowling alley. I don't like bowling. I suck at bowling really bad. I really do. I suck at it. I, I suck so bad at bowling, but it's a great place to do it. And like I told you before, it's all about location, location, location. If the location is there, you can definitely do it. Um, but again, it's all around about the other cities. So it's location. Uh, the best place would probably be a bowling alley. Or I had an ice rink and it turned out fantastic. So let's let's keep going here. We'll we'll see if we have any other comments that it's worth talking. And now we're gonna get really into the whole entire fact of uh, how you actually uh, go on with your bowling meet. Okay. So uh, I'll read the comments in a little bit. We'll I'll try to talk a little bit more about the comments, and we're, we'll definitely get to the comments and all of it. So basically you have yourself bowling. Okay. Number one, most bowling alleys are going to make you get shoes. So how I get around with this 
Uh, I usually do like a party room. And what I do is I go, well, it's the party room. There's four lanes and everybody gets their shoes for free. So what I usually do is I usually set up a base price on it, which the base price is going to be your best option. If people are going to these meets and they are having, uh, let's say, uh, $10 for if you don't want a bowl, because there's going to be furries who do not want a bowl. They are like me. They do not like to bowl. I hate bowling. I do it just because everybody else is doing it. And you know that old saying the Romans do. But uh, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create uh, a scale. So let me uh, let me get let me show you my meat and I'll show you where the scale is. Uh, so let me go to here. Go to here. Let me go to here. Okay. So sorry. I That's not that uh, wrong one. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Okay. Sorry, got like 30 pages open and everything like that. Let me just see if that is. Okay. Technical difficulties are doing, I'm not doing that too bad. Okay, so now, whenever you're looking at this, right, and you're going, okay, Laurel Lanes, everything. So then you see the price of $10 if you do not plan on bowling. Okay, now where I got the $10 from is this package cost me. Uh, I have actually the paper receipt. Again, you want to make sure to have that receipt on hand. Okay. The receipt says it costs $64.65 per, let's say, uh, per lane. And that's basically how much it costs. So I basically looked at that and I was like, okay. So $15, I got four lanes, but $15 per person will be about... 300 something it was like 320 dollars for each for the bowling so i divided that by how many people i think who would come so i always try to do a base factor of 15. 15 is my base factor and the reason why i say 15 is because uh 15 could possibly come and that could possibly be four people at a lane so I'm doing this and I'm figuring it out and I got to hide all this crap. But so I figured out $15 would be good for 15 people. So also what I did was since these people who are not going to be bowling at all, I determined that $5 would be good because you get basically all you can drink and all you like all the teas and everything that you want to have it. So it's going to be $10, which I think is a fair price. It's $5 because $5 pays for the shoes, the bowling and stuff. And then the tens for the room. Now the room's going to cost something too. The room cost me a hundred dollars and how I factored that in was, uh, I added it all up and that's where I got the three twenty. So basically the room is always going to cost you a little bit more depending if you got a room, uh, again, curtains will do fine. So if you don't want to pay for the room and they have a big enough space that you can put curtains, perfectly fine. You can charge less than that. You can charge higher than that, depending on your bowling alley. So basically what I'm trying to say here too is all these people who have paid and let's say everyone has paid or one person hasn't paid. Okay. There's always going to be that one person who does not pay you, who thinks it's a joke to pay you, I guess, or they just kind of go it. Now, for these kind of people, and everybody hates these kind of people, because is that really fair that you can actually, uh, you know, go to a meet while everybody else is paying? So what I usually do for these types of situations, uh, I usually take advantage of a checklist. Now, Checklists are, my opinion, very underrated, but I like it. So what I usually do, like, I usually take a piece of paper like this, and I write down everybody who's coming, and I check them off as I go, and I check them off as I go. And let's say if that one person who tries to ghost it, and I go, hey, wait, wait, you didn't pay, you can't be here. Uh, now, what I usually try to say is, if you don't pay, you can't use the facility, like, you can't use can't go bowling or you can't do rooms. If you want to stay, so be it. But I'm not letting you use any of my 
extra things that you know people actually paid for and people actually are getting good vantage soda no so uh, that's what I always do and if he tries to try to uh, make it harder than it has to be that's when you you basically say hey don't come back just go don't come back because you don't want to make you don't want to make this drama related field and you don't want to make people angry or mad at you but you also don't want to be a treating a freeloader while everybody else is paying. I hate that. I hate that. I hate when people freeload. Okay. Or they're, they're, now, if you get it for free and you win a contest or you do something like that, yeah, then that's fine. You, you, you won. You did it. But if you're freeloading at this damn thing and I took all this dang time to do, well, then we got some problems, buddy. And if you can't pay me $10 and you should really take a look at your bank account before going to these firms. Okay. So you basically did it. Let's just say everybody paid. Thank you, God. They all paid and you're having a wonderful time. And you notice that somebody, uh, now at these meets, you're going to want to keep a PG-13. You don't want anybody, you know, getting all like anything, you know. Hogs are always great, you know, stuff like that. And uh, what... What I like to do is I like to do this too is uh, try to keep the lanes a little bit separated from everyone else because if you don't, then things are going to be having problems and people are going to be having problems saying, this kid all he wants to do is take my picture and this kid all he wants to do is, you know, do stuff like that. So again, try to have it in a part of the bowling alley that it's not going to be completely with everybody else. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because that could cause problems. You can trip over children. I've seen it happen before. Children cry, their parents freak out and everything like that. So keep it away from the, the people who are there to just bowl. Except for when they want to ask for your picture, then so be it. But don't, don't like go out and try to find friends outside of the group. I mean, you can, but I'm not recommending it. I'm not recommending it at all because it could really hurt somebody because you are in a suit, but if everyone around you in a suit, then that's fine. Um, so let me read some of these comments and, uh, we'll try to see if we can find some comments here and we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it back on track here. Uh, would, what would it be like to first suit in a bank? What would you do? Well, you'd probably get arrested. I'm just going to say that that's a pretty obvious one. If you're going to first suit in a bank, obviously. Okay, let's see. Uh, like, if you would like to suit there, you have to suit some kind. I'm just seeing if there's any, uh, let me see if there's any, like, sort of questions or anything like that. Uh, do you at least know where Pittsburgh Riverhood is? Oh, I do know where that is. Um, uh, I really don't see any questions. Don't really see anything like that. How many times? Have you were stopped for pictures at meets or cons? So many times. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, normal people, uh, God, I love them. I, I, I like normal people because they usually are very entertaining. Oh, by the way, if you're a normie and you're liking this, please subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that. Wink, wink. But, oh, and press the like button. Please, guys, press the like button. Uh, don't want to be, like, sponsor myself like that. But uh, people can get really annoying at fur meets. Uh, and how I say that is there sometimes they're the one person. Uh, also, you want to scope out the area, too, that you're having your fur meet. I remember going to a fur meet and some random guy, like, saying you want to do drugs. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, no deal. So uh, scope out the meat before you have it. Uh, make sure it's in a family-friendly place and you can at least have fun with it and not have to worry about every two seconds you know, that one guy who's going to be, you know, trash talking furries or anything like that. So <coughs> I'm sorry, coughing. Let me uh, take two second water break here. Okay. My hockey water bottle. Okay. So let's see. Do we have anything? Uh, Quinn turned back. I once had a normal. Now I have fuzzy butt. Well, that's usually, usually the case. Already subscribed, thumbs up. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, if anybody has is new, okay. So basically, what you're gonna want to do are those three steps. So at the end of the meet, uh, at the end of the meet, you you just wrapped up. You're all done. 
Uh, make sure the room's all nice and clean. So, you know, they're looking at... Because, see, what you want to do is also gain a good reputation with the bowling alley because if they go, well, this these guys have been here before. They're great at what they do. Uh, sometimes they can give you discounts. Uh, I had a discount for ice skating once um, uh, offered to me, and I, I felt really bad because I moved away from Harrisburg. But that's the one key here, too. You want to make sure you're having a good reputation with this bowling alley. Because if you don't have a good reputation, and let's say if it all goes to... Then you're probably not going to be hosting these meets there ever again. And it becomes a huge problem within any sort of factor. If you can't have a meet, then you can't have fun. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. So, what we're going to do here, guys, uh, for the last... 15 20 minutes i'm gonna give you my phone number hopefully nobody calls in that's wrong let me turn on my thing here again because the battery was dead hopefully it doesn't Welcome. die waiting to connect okay connected to bluetooth device okay so i connected it everybody see uh the phone number is uh 717-839-3684 and you can call in about some fur meets, some questions about some fur meets that you might have, uh, some other things like that. Again, the number is 1717-839-3684. Um, you can call and just talk about anything you want to do or anything that, you know, Give me some good questions here. I would like to hear some uh, feedbacks on if you do plan on doing a meet. Uh, where would you like to do it? You know, I'll give you some tips. I've got Google Maps here. It's all good. I mean, I I've got pretty inter good speed. I don't know. Internet speed. I don't know. But uh, so uh, another good tips to do when you're at a fur meet uh, is number one, you're going to want to keep it interesting for these people. So, do a little dance. No, I'm kidding. Don't do a little dance. Don't do that. So, what you're going to want to do, too, is whenever you're having these fur meets, uh, to make sure everything's going smoothly and you're not going to be tripping over everybody, is, oh, group photos. That, that's another good thing, okay? Always have a planned group photo of everyone. Unless if they don't want to be in the, you know, if they're not a fursuiter and they don't want to be in the shot, let them have that choice. Let them, you know, at least go, okay, I don't want to be in the photo. Don't force anybody into the photo. Don't, like, punch them out and go, you're in the photo now. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that when you're doing a group photo, have a time planned. So I usually like doing it in the middle. Like, if it's 8.30 to 10, I usually do it around, like, one, nine, 10. One, oh. eight. Two, I have six, a phone zero, caller. Hold five, on. Zero, one. Hello there, Mr. Uh, Wolf. How's it going? Yep, got a bolo again. How are you doing? Good, good. So, um, what's your question? Oh, well, uh, I would just want to say it's really timely of you to be doing this uh, since uh, there's so much going on locally here as far as... Uh, meets are concerned uh, they're uh for my particular telegram group they're uh, about to have their first pot luck i believe it's next week we already do uh, breakfast meets you know just to keep up in touch with each other uh, like weekly and we are getting ready to have a bowling meet that i'm really trying to get to uh next month okay so you're you're about to have a so you already have these meets get togethers, you know, at breakfast and other things like that. Right. Um, and now you're trying your, yeah. the very first bowling meet, right? Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, a number. Going on. Okay. So are you part of this group? Like, are you trying to advertise for it? Or are you trying to do anything to help out with the group or, or, or what's going on? Yeah, I'm already in the group. Um, it's a, this is a new thing. Well, the, uh, the bowling thing is a uh, really a new thing. The potluck is something I won't be able to attend. Uh, but the bowling thing is, uh, 
really a new thing for us that uh, another member, a uh, really nice guy, has uh, gotten together to do. Okay. And so, I'm going out of my way to try to uh, uh, get people to come to it. Uh, one, because uh, I'd really like to uh, stretch my legs in the, the music that I already do. I'd like to play some music for them as well, if, uh, that, if they'll allow that. Uh, but the other, like um, I told you, I'm doing that uh, documentary, so I'd really like to get some footage shot there. So it's one of my main, one of my big uh, reasons for kind of pushing it forward. Uh, but um, any outside of uh, what you've just mentioned, uh, any other uh, pointers about how to drum up interest and get people to attend, you know, outside of just really mentioning it every time you can think of it to uh, all the other telegram groups that you might be a part of? Uh, well, what I usually do too to to mention it, um, it's very subtle. I just go up to them and yell at them. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. No. Don't yell at anybody. But no, what what I usually do is uh, I go to other meets. Um, now you said that you go to the one, you know, the breakfast or anything like that, right? Uh, yep. Do you know of any other meets that go on around your area or maybe like close to your area? The breakfast thing is pretty much uh, the only regular thing that they're doing right now. You know, the potluck is like just is just starting like this month. Okay, so let, let's. So there's not a whole <coughs> lot of writing. Okay, where do you live? I'm gonna I'm gonna show this up on the map here. Let me just switch my thing over here to this. Okay, so where do you live? Where is your scope? Yes. Uh, I live in Oklahoma. You live in Oklahoma. That. The big Oklahoma. Okay, so let me just Google this here. And what I usually do, how I determine on how you can actually, you know, be able to um, get people. If I can spell, sorry, I'm in my first suit. It's quite hard to see right now. Okay, Oklahoma. You know, it's actually funny. I was actually just... Just speaking about Oklahoma last night. Okay, so where at's in Oklahoma? South, east, west. Um, yeah, I'm in the Tulsa area, although uh, there's a group that uh, speaks for Oklahoma City as well, and I'm in, I'm in both groups. Okay, so what I would do, do, do you, so you said that you're in the group for Oklahoma? Yeah. Okay. So here's what I would do if, if you really want to get this word out and not just Telegram. Telegram works, but it's not really that effective when it comes to, you know, people actually clicking on it because there's too many people actually talking and doing like this. So right. uh, the only way to really get it to affect in Oklahoma would be asking one of the uh, advisors on the Telegram chat to uh, pin it. Um, which would help you out tremendously since it doesn't even look like that far of a ride to tell you the truth, uh, in Oklahoma. So that would be my very first thing on telegram. And number two, uh, do you have Twitter, Facebook, anything like that? I have I am, uh, Twitter exclusively. Yeah, uh, I just won't use Facebook, but uh, I do work on Twitter. It's okay. I hate Facebook. I barely use it anymore anyway. It's dying, hopefully. But, okay, so here's what I would do. Go on a Telegram. And I think Telegram, you can create a uh, group, okay? Or even go to Sir SVP. Uh, that's another one that I would do. Is uh, I, have, I, have the, I have it in the descriptions below. And what I would do, I would try to, number one, you want to go to a link that has every detail lined up. Because furries have a tendency of having a problem of going and going, well, this thing's going to cost me a lot of money. If you say it's free 90% of the time, they're going to go, I'm going. So you're going to want to sign up for an account for that and create that. Okay. And again, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just saying because I've used this a hundred million times. Uh, number two is you're going to want to create something on Twitter that creates interest. So what I would do is create uh, a Twitter for it, you know, giving updates on the event, giving, you know, certain people that go, you know, I want to go to this meet, but I don't know 
what time it is or if it's going to be canceled or if anything, because if something happens, then, you know, it could be canceled and people want to know this stuff ASAP. So that's what I would do. I would create a Twitter for it and create a Sir SVP for it to get more interest because the more information you give a person, the more chances of them going, Hey, we want to go to this. And another thing, what I would do looking at the map that I'm at right now, uh, try to go for people in Wichita. I mean, that doesn't look like a far ride. Um, try to go for there. You're going to want to go for, uh, maybe nothing really in Arkansas. Um, Dallas is a little too far away. Um, yeah, but see, that was pretty ideal though. But see, if, if you want to uh, join their tele, I'm sure, pretty sure Dallas probably has a Telegram chat. Join their Telegram chat. There might be some people who are just above Dallas that might be able to come. Because it looks like it's a pretty easy ride if you go from uh, just a little bit above Dallas. Like, I'd probably say your limit would probably be uh, Hogo. Is it Hogo? Hogo? I'd probably be your limit. I probably said that is your limit because it's, mm-hmm. it's just a straight shot up from, uh, what is that? 69. Yeah. Yeah. You could set that as your limit, yep. get into the Dallas chat and just create a telegram for it. <coughs> <coughs> the more things you create for it, the more chances of people seeing it, the more people see it, the more information they get, the more they'll come. That's, that's my, that's my philosophy. Because people want to know what's going on in this meet. Uh, if you give them the bare minimum, they're going to take it as a bare minimum and go, I don't know what the hell's going on. So that's what I would do. Um, hopefully that helps. I mean, that helps a lot. Yeah, that, those are really good uh, suggestions, you know, because I, I had not really uh, considered um, Texas, but uh, the, the really Wichita, that's, uh, that's uh, tempting. And we probably would go for the. Uh, the Texas area, you know, just for the heck of it, you know, no, no harm in trying. Yeah, you know, and there's furries that travel a long distance for these. As long as, as long as it's a good meet and it gets the word around, it will eventually become something. Again, if you only get 13 people or maybe 10 people on the very first meet, don't be discouraged. You got to keep going. You got to keep chugging. And, it's, it's very important for this because if you just give up after one attempt, y- you'll never know w- w- what it would have turned out to be. So that's my tip for anybody who's creating a fur meet at the beginning. So, um, yeah, uh, give it a shot, you know. And we'll definitely bring that up to the guy who's uh, sponsoring it, and uh, thank you for that. That's really that was really a good suggestion, sir. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I, I I have done at least eight or nine meets so far, and I I have been in the same exact situation as you. If I actually go to, uh, oops, if I actually go to my town where I grew up, it was it was definitely in a uh, where the hell's that kind of location and. The only thing I had close was Pittsburgh, so I tried to go for Pittsburgh, and I tried to go for a couple other ones. So, and and that's really all you got to do. You got to rely sometimes on the big cities, and you got to rely for people to get the word across. So, um, why am I here for getting something started in Altoona? Because I'm familiar with that area as well. <laughs> no, well, yes, I am. Well, that's good. Uh, I used to live in there. I used to live dad heart in the middle. So, but. Uh, anything else? Oh, no, that's uh, really it. Uh, that's a uh, very uh, good uh, suggestion. So I want to definitely bring those up to the uh, people I'm working with while they're fresh. Okay. Well, <coughs> sorry about the cough. I'm really hot in this oh, no suit. Problem. But okay. Well, thank you for the call. And uh, hopefully your meat turns out to be a huge success. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, thank you. It's, it's always good to talk to you. It's always good to talk to you, Mr. Wolf. Okay. Talk to you again. See you later. See you later.
okay, well, that was a very interesting call. We had one person who was really interested on in starting their own meet. I at least helped them a little bit. Uh, and again, if, if you guys would like to call in, uh, the number is 1717-839-3684. Uh, give me a call. Uh, see if there could be possibly something for you. And, and that's really the key here is, you know, you, you got to determine where your limits are. Uh, in his case, he was pretty, at least close to somewhat Dallas. Uh, there could be possibly a friend who knows in Oklahoma, so they'll just travel back with him, spend the night, everything like that. So uh, that's really the key here. So also, too, if, if you are liking this video, please press the like button down below. Subscribe to my channel. I have usually different topics for every week. Hopefully have some different guests on soon, too. But really, that's the, really the key for it here. Uh, fur meets are all about location, location, location. If you can really like sell that location, you'll be perfectly fine. You know, he could have even moved it to Oklahoma City and just tried it there, you know. Uh, it might have been a little bit of drive for him, but again, it's all about location. And, you know, he'll, he'll be able to get it. I, I'm pretty confident that they'll at least get at least maybe 10 people and again, you're not going to be scoring gold. You're not going to be the next Delaware Furball uh, for the very first time you've ever created a meet. So let's see if we have any other questions here. Let me just take a drink of my water before I cough up a storm here. <coughs> Too late. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Gotta love it. Okay, so. Water's really good. Uh... So let's take a look here. Let's see if we have anybody else who wants to call in. Uh, let's see if we have any other questions in the comments, too. I didn't know the first thing about first meets. Well, that's why I'm trying to talk to you guys about it. Uh, quick turn back. Normals now. Back to Fuzzy Bot Boy. Okay, so uh, already subscribe. Okay, so we're already good on this. Okay, so... Uh, I'll let people call in. You still got another like nine, ten minutes to call in. Uh, so we'll definitely get some more calls, hopefully. Uh, he's like the only one I know who ever calls in. He's like my number one call in guy. If I ever want somebody to call in, I'm getting I'm getting Mr. Wolf on the phone. Um, but hopefully, you know, I've been really helpful. I'm, uh, again, really the keys to fur meets are basically... Uh, Again, number one, you want location. Uh, number two, I'd probably say uh, for that location, you gotta you gotta start with the dinner. I, I I personally like starting with the dinner. It breaks the ice for some for some people are really naturally nervous until they actually start eating a meal and starting to get to know the person right next to them. Then it becomes a question of uh, do I want to continue talking to this guy or you know, or anything like that. Uh, so really location. Then you have the advertising, which comes next. And the advertising can be done through Telegram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. <coughs> be coughing because I'm completely hot right now. One, three, oh, five, two, four, okay. five, four, five. Hello. Can you hear me? Mr. Davis. Hello? Hello. How are you today? Yep. I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. So what's your fur name, Mr. Davis? I don't really have one yet. I'm the new boy. To the fandom. That's perfectly fine. We're going to have a whole entire conversation about making your own fursonas, doing fursuits. That will be next week's show. I just gave that out. But, yes. Okay, so, tell me, uh, since you're new to the furry fandom, would you like to create a meet and try to look, make some more friends? Sure. 
and it sounds like fun. Okay. So, do you have any questions about that? I have a question about meat. Okay. Do you know... Do you know what, like, the first meat should be for someone who's new? Ah, uh, well, it depends on... It just depends. I'd probably go with maybe a bowling meat. Again, I suck at bowling. Everybody knows I suck at bowling. Every time I bowl, it's like watching David versus Goliath, and it's like pathetic. But the the whole entire thing is, is uh, I'd probably go for bowling meat or maybe like a dinner meat. Dinner meats are always fantastic to start out at. So... <coughs> Um, uh, do you have any other questions about the meat? Like, you know, what you do or, or, uh, anything? What's a common thing to do at meats? Uh, other than like talking? Well, there, there's obviously socializing, uh, which is basically talking. There's sometimes bowling. Bowling is a very fun safe activity for fursuits and, and that's why I, I think that bowling is so popular because you can do bowling there's sometimes pull at the bowling meets uh i know york they have a laser tag type of thing going on there uh there's so many different things to do at meets that it's crazy sometimes there's even artists in these meets that where they'll do art for you um like the Delaware. Now, Delaware is a huge meet. I, but they actually have artists who go, well, I'll set up a table and we can actually talk about, you know, doing art. So there's a lot of stuff to do at a meet. Um, just a lot of different things. So. Uh, they sound like a lot of fun. Yeah, they, they really are. Um in my opinion, I think fur meets are a great way to learn about the furry fandom and, and not really get overwhelmed like a con. I think a con gets overwhelming at times, um, especially the bigger cons. So, uh, Now, do you have anything else re relating to that? You know, like... Um, uh, I know I've been talking how to create a meet. Uh, do, do you know how to like find the meets or, or do you need help? I know there are a bunch of ways like you can look it up online or and stuff like that. Well, yeah, of course. Online is probably the best one for it. Um, so where do you live? What was that? Where, where do you live? I'm in Florida. Oh, you're in Florida. Oh, my gosh. You've got the best place for meats. Okay? It depends on where you're at in Florida. You have got literally so many choices in Florida. Okay, where where do you live in Florida? Or give me somewhere roughly around Florida. I'm more in the middle of Florida. More in the middle. Okay, so we're looking more for... Let's take a look at some Florida things here. Okay, so you, are you close to Orlando? Yes. My God, you are in the capital city of Fur Meats. There's so many things that happen in Orlando. Um, from the, they have a Halloween get together. Hold on, let me cough. <coughs> they have a Halloween get together. They have bowling they must have bowling every month. Uh, really what I would do if you're looking for meets, uh, I think they have an Orlando Twitter account. If I'm not mistaken, there's an Orlando Twitter. And I know you're on Telegram because you're on my uh, my Telegram chat. Uh, take a look at uh, Florida Furs uh, for searching for that. Or you're going to want to take a look for Orlando Furs because... There's a lot of stuff going on in Orlando. Uh, and 
I like that. That that's the good thing about being furries. Uh, if you live in a particular area, you can basically have a fur for me every week. Of course, you're not going to be able to make all of them, but you can at least try. Um, but that's what I would do. I would start looking for Orlando meats, you know, and, and you'll find them. Trust me, you'll find them. You'll find them faster than you could say hello. So, um, uh, but that's my tip to you. Just go online, uh, search around for Orlando meats, and I'm sure you can find it. Uh, but anything else? No, that's all my questions. Okay. Well, thank you for calling in. Uh, can I call you Dave? Just Dave, straight up Dave. Uh, you can call me Johnny. Johnny. Okay. Well, thank you for calling in, Johnny. And uh, I hope you have a great day. And hopefully you, you can. Do. Oh, hold on. <coughs> Oh my gosh, I'm dying over here. But hopefully you have a great day, and hopefully you can attend your first meet. I would love to hear about it. Uh, I always love hearing newcomers come into this fandom and, you know, actually be able to tell me about their first meet and their experiences. So thank you again for calling in, Johnny. No problem. Okay, have a good day, Johnny. You too. Well, Johnny was another one who has, is new to this fandom, has never seen a meet. That's terrible. I'm sorry, Johnny. You'll be able to get one. You'll be able to see one. Trust me. It, it takes a while. It, it's not really like one of those things that you just wake up one morning and you're a fur and you get to go to every meet in the beginning. So... Hopefully, Johnny can make it to his first meet and everything like that. Uh, now, I do want to say, I'll leave one more time for one more call. You got six minutes to call in, about six or seven minutes. Uh, the number is 717-839-3684. Uh, you can call me in, concerns about different questions, about how, how it is, uh, you know, how to create a meet. Or if you're a newcomer like Johnny was, how to really, you know, how, how to get him, how to get to meets and stuff like that. So let's see if we have any questions in the comments. And then I'll continue if we don't we'll continue talking in there. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, let's see, Night Runner. Yes. I uh, no. Um see uh, there's not really too many questions out there but if you are liking and sub <coughs> I'm gonna die I'm just gonna die I'm gonna pass out but if uh, if you're liking this please hit the like button down below if you want to subscribe to me hit the subscribe button share it wrong with your friends and you know if you're really concerned about any sort of for me you can call in and we'll we'll hook you up as they say dog okay now, so you made you made your uh, first suiting meet and you got everything going and you want to create a second one. Uh, and here's why I'm going to tell you about this too. Uh, whenever you're doing any sort of thing, you're going to want to create a pattern. Like I do my YouTube shows once a week. You're going to create a pattern for your furry meets. You're not going to do it every once a year because every once a year is not really going to get that much advertisement around. You're going to want to do about one to two months. And the reason why you do it one to two months is because of this. It's the rhythm of it. It gets people talking going, well, if I can't make it this month, I can always make it the next month after that. If I can't make it this month, then I'll make it the next month after that. And that's the whole entire thing. Fur meets are all about consistency. If you keep having fur meets, you're eventually going to be able to uh, branch out and people are going to start liking you more and more. Uh, well, talking about it more and more. And that's what you want. You want the chatter to be more talking positive than negative. Uh, if any drama happens after the very first meet, try to nip it in the butt. You want to nip it in the butt as soon as possible and everything like that. Uh, so... I think I'm going to continue 
uh, I've got two more minutes. If somebody wants to call in, <coughs> I could definitely call in. The number is 1717-839-3684. And you can call in. you got two more minutes to call in because I'm going to end this here. And what I want to do is talk about, too, that I'm going to start doing this at 9 o'clock on Friday. I think this is the perfect time. Uh, a lot of people are getting into their weekend spirits. And I, I feel like Friday at 9 o'clock is going to be the best time for me. If you're liking this, please hit the subscribe button, like button, crap like that. But that's all I have to say about that. But, again, you're going to want to keep a consistent base all the time. Uh, now, we have one more minute, and I want to do my closing thoughts, I guess, since nobody else is calling in. Uh that's fine. We'll get more call-ins in the future. But what you're going to want to do, closing thoughts, is number one, location, location, location. I've been saying this the whole entire damn time, but it's so damn true on these meets that it's really a mystery on meets that really make it well. It's not a mystery. Meets that make it well, like the Boston meet, the Burlington meet, the... Uh, Canadian meets. They're all doing it in great locations. Number two, uh, I want to say is don't get discouraged. Do not get discouraged. Your very first meet isn't going to be that popular. You're not going to be on the walls going, my God, is this popular? As a hundred people just flood into your gate and you can't control it. No, probably not going to happen. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to keep going at it and you're going to keep going at it until you actually get it right. And it might take the 15th time. It might take the 30th time. It might take whatever. But you don't give up and you keep going and you keep flying. <coughs> so I'm just going to say that. And we're going to, we're going to do it. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So hope. Hopefully, this kind of helped you on your quest to make a fur meet. Let me see if there's one, one or two more comments, if there's anything else. Uh, hopefully, it was fun, successful, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, and I do want to say, again, keep trying at those fur meets. And I, thank you guys for watching tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, and have a dashing night. Thank you for watching the Talking With Dashing Foxy Show. And I'll be back next time at 9 o'clock on a Friday. Because it's Friday. Friday. And make sure to subscribe to me on a Friday. So, bye. Thank you for watching. And I hope you have a dashing night. Bye. Uh, it's the cursor.